How does New Credo align with the vision of the network? And what can we expect in the future? How does the new Credo, Credo launch align with the long-term vision of Credo? Sure. Well, we touched on, hopefully passionately enough, all of the, the things that, uh, that gets us going here at Credo. But, uh, you know, if I sum, sum them up, uh, democratizing access to costliness, you know, cost of being so primitive to everything we build in this space, it's really our mission. Uh, you know, fostering a secure and interconnected uh, ecosystem, being able to work across chains becomes way more important nowadays. And then I think bringing self-custody um, down to the level that is accessible and a viable option for any players in our ecosystem, that's, that's really what we're, what we're about. And the platform is really the vessel, uh, one of the vessels in which we can execute this strategy, right? It's the platform is a user experience, is a user acquisition funnel. The platform is obviously our API as well, how people can build businesses on top of it. But the platform just is almost like a wrapper on top of the protocol. And the protocol is really where the hardcore um, technology lies and where the trust, uh, uh, trust gets engineered out to the extent where we can. And so if I look at the new credo now and, and sort of playing back against this vision, I think for um, if you're a capital allocator or just a Web3 user that are trying to um, navigate the ecosystem safely, what we what you'll get with this new platform is a much more user-friendly and trusted way to, you know, particularly with Wallet Connect accessible to anyone, um, to to just go around the space without without the threat of someone spoofing your your keys from your browser cache, right? Anything is that's your, in your computer is at risk by definition. And for enterprises, it's really the you know, our, our goal is to make, uh, again, custody accessible by, by everybody. So if you're an enterprise that is dealing with uh, digital assets or plan to, or wants to service them, uh, you know, having a, a, a well-defined API in which you can model the right custodial relationship that you want to have with your user uh, or completely, you know, service assets that are in the custody of your users, that goes a long way to, to, to help us find the right compromise when it comes to centralization that it's bound to happen at the at the edges of, of these networks so you know it's not it's not something that you know will show up one day and say ta-da here's here's the vision delivered but it's it's just you know months and years of work of finding fine tuning finding exactly what works and what doesn't to make this a more accessible and more uh, more user friendly for for everybody and when you talk about the network i think of it in in, in two ways uh, one of them is the network is our, it's to Gabe's point, that the hardcore technology, the, the real architectural primitive that we've aligned on from a vision standpoint as this is how actually we should be scaling uh, um, Credo's vision. I also think of that by the network as a stakeholder, as the, the community, right? And this alignment between what Credo does as a platform and how the community uh, perceives Credo, but also is this kind of actually got participates in the validation of the network. This is the whole point of this. I think that that alignment is it's 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 an essential, but it's also a fragile one, right? Because on the one hand, um, you know, we have a, a platform that is that is user driven, so we want to make sure that you know what what we deliver is uh, from from uh, from a service standpoint, I suppose, is for our user base. And it's, it also means that we always need to reiterate that, you know, this is something that is entirely dependent. Like there's a codependence there's a re, uh, on, on, on how we leverage the support of our network to actually do that. So it, it, it's fragile because those two things are actually separate things. By the same time, I think that the, the dialectic there is absolutely essential because we will only succeed if those two things are actually happen at the same time or at, or, or in, in, in or in a coordinated way, so I, I really think as, as as the community, as the 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 the, the, the base that's going to allow us to actually build the best kind of products um, that satisfy our users, and and the one sort of um, uh, the the one um, the binding element in all this obviously is the token, and then the demonstrable utility of that token is is the kind of the easiest measure. Of how successful we are actually binding those two stakeholders, uh, and to Gibbs' point, like a lot of that is part of a of, of a long term roadmap because it's hard and it has to be hard because of how complex and how little room there is for uh, you know for error in what we're doing. 
But that's 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 exactly why you know we've got the kind of resources, the talent, and the focus uh, dedicated by by, by Quido as a company to making sure this happens as intended. Yeah, and the, the natural bit is so important, and you're right, pointing pointing it out. I think. You know, back to what we said at the beginning and sort of alluded in between the lines, what we're trying to do is not to recreate what was already there. So, you know, a short path would have been us running, uh, um, you know, a, a, an MPC um, with every enterprise we, we interact with. And, and it would be probably an easier way, an easier path to market, definitely an easier engineering for, for a solution. But that's, that's really not what, what we want to do. What we want to find is a different model, one where you're not reliant on, on even Credo, the company, uh, for the security of your assets. And in order to do that, there's only one way that we know at this point is, is through decentralized uh, infrastructure. And decentralized infrastructure requires incentives, requires uh, a much more sophisticated um, you know, mechanism to, um, to ensure the longevity of, of what we build uh, might even outlast the company that built it. And, you know, it sounds dramatic, but that's sort of the, when you build in open source and maybe some of, some of the folks listening are familiar with, you often think uh, that you're building for someone else. Someone else can take this code and take it forward. And the same way uh, when you build a, a, um, a service and a solution like ours where it can be run beyond uh, beyond us being, uh, being the operators, you build it for someone else, you build it with that in mind. And I think that's uh, incredibly important when you're dealing with something so fundamental as costly right it cannot be it cannot be centralizing one single company it cannot be um you know we cannot recreate simply the same model that financial finance has because i think you know we're bound to improve uh, what we had before otherwise would be would be madness right of course yeah and and touching back on accessibility there because i know i can often be thought of a bit narrow-minded um, when it comes to accessibility, you know, you need to think that not everyone has access to a desktop or an iPhone. Not everyone has access to Wi-Fi. I can easily walk down the street if my Wi-Fi is out and go to a cafe and use it there. Um, how does Credo think about accessibility and go outside of the box in, in those senses? Uh, I'll let Dave take that good one. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. It's a tricky one, right? This, this um, is... You know what? <laughs> go on, sorry. Uh, so what, one of our um, one of our core um, pieces of the protocol is our ability to have an end user hold a secret and, and prove back to to our chain that they're indeed uh, you know authorizing something. And the same can be said with um, our our, um, our server version of it. So you can you know with what we call a signing agent, you can now add to our policy an actual secure server that runs in an enclave. So one of those chips that even I cannot try and tamper if I'm operating with it. Um, and, you know, the combination of these several um, execution environments, the combination of potentially advancement on, on zero knowledge proof can really open a new, uh, a new window into how we can get participation on users without, without mandating a specific, um, a specific set of technologies or tools. Right now, you know, our app works best Obviously, when uh, when we have access to an enclave, where we can secure your secrets there, so that no one, not even the operating system, can can attempt to access it. And you know, as you look at broadening the access, um, you look at you know users, you look at servers. You know, cu custody doesn't have to be a human being at the other end of the phone, right? It can be uh, you know with ChatGPT four now. You, you start thinking that you know, maybe there is there is there's going to be someone else that isn't a human on the other side. Um, and so you're thinking about uh, about more the technology play. What how how can I broaden the access of of the protocol to more and more compute devices? Awesome. I, I, Thanks, I, I, Gabe. I answer your question almost like in the in the in the in the simplest kind of <laughs> user way, which is I, I, on the accessibility point, where like part of it is well, this is still access and the securing of of digital assets. So I think that if tomorrow the world you know, connection to to, to to networks collapsed entirely. I think we've got a we've got a problem that even Credo might struggle to actually solve for. But but in in the in the simplest way, like I think that accessibility is also you know how how 
in a world where my own set of accessibility as a media user is compromised, for example, do I have certainty with the fact that my assets are secured? There's, so the, in, in that context, there's everything that we do in the background, but there's also the, you know, the stuff that as a user, you can actually implement yourself. And actually, uh, Gabe just alluded to some of the, 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 the features that support that, but you know, you could be a user that just has a one of one signature scheme in that in that context. That's uh, is something that we always say is not or the most advisable route. But if you've got the, you know, uh, um, um, of two or three scheme, that means that if you are lacking the access, but you need to take some action, you've also kind of dedicated some of the ability to actually secure the assets or make a decision about the assets to your, your, your own personal network of trusted counterparties. So, so the accessibility piece is, is, is um, you know, I, I think is, is also addressed, like actually on on, on in the UX, mm-hmm. uh, in, in, in in that sense. And you remind me of another bit. And sorry, we keep rambling, but you you ask us very tough questions. That's what you get. Um, one thing that I'm quite excited about in the new uh, in the new credo is this idea of um, policy hierarchy. You can have a policy that governs another policy. So that means that policy can only govern changes, you know, state transition of that policy from one thing to another. And uh, it sounds uninspiring if I say if I sell it to you like this, but imagine imagine a scenario in which um, you want to you're you're building a mainstream application in which asking users to store a seed phrase is, is potentially a big um, you know a big UX uh, no no right it's uh, you know you're you're after the quickest acquisition you you want a low effort uh, way of converting users, but you still want to give them self costing and potentially a way to recover somehow. Um, through um, a service provider or, or yourself, and so if if you're if you're a solutionary th- that is thinking about how to get mainstream adoption, you can start thinking through the terms of custody and, and say, well, I want my users to have the authority of making transactions with their own keys, where I cannot interfere, but I want the ability to recover them, say through a biometric proof, through a, a, a proof of identity, or something like that. And so as a business, these are really tough problems to solve if you were to solve them alone. But again, we, we are an infrastructure player, right? So we, you can use us uh, to implement exactly the custodial relationship you want with your user. And in this case, you could use you know, yourself as the uh, recovery mechanism where you need a proof of identity or something along those lines. And the only thing you can do is to you know, rotate me to another phone. I lost my phone. I don't know how to recover. You can rotate me to another phone. And there's no way for me to cheat because everything is transparent. Everything is on chain. There is no, there's very little trust uh, needed for a model like this. But it's it's very powerful, particularly when you're looking at accessibility again. You know, lowering the complexity uh, bar that is needed to enter to enter the space. Yeah, that's that's super interesting, and it's pretty clear that a lot of deep thought has gone into accessibility, which is awesome, and in the end will hopefully drive greater adoption. Listeners, make sure to check out new Credo platform and let us know what you think. Your feedback is invaluable to help Credo continue to evolve and enhance its services. Uh, And don't forget to keep your eye out on our social channels for all the latest news and updates. We'll be sure to keep you updated on any exciting developments as they unfold. Uh, Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time.